morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I'm Jeff Killeen, Chairman of the Fund for, the, for Lake George. Um, but I think more importantly today, I'm a Lake George lakeside homeowner who lives on Diamond Point, where I live year round. Uh, Lake George is embedded in my soul, as it is so many of us on this call, and I always want to do everything I can to protect it. 15 years ago, when we restored our 1908 family camp into a four season home, we had to fully upgrade our septic system, which I will admit was ancient. It was complicated, it was a huge task, and I had candidly few resources available to me uh, to advise me and to help me through that project. I had little insight into the options I had and how I could do the right things, which is what I wanted to do. I only wish I had the fund safe septic website to guide and inform me back then. But again, that was 15 years ago. Today, aging and faulting, faulty septic systems are really a seminal issue facing our lake's legendary water quality. The quality of septic systems on Lake George also impact residential property values and the vitality of the hospitality and tourism economy that drives Lake George. That's true because clear, clean, and algae-free water is what makes the great Lake George equation work. So with all of this in mind, we've created this pace-setting new safe septic program. The program is built on two pillars for the Lake George property owner. Number one, a website that has everything a homeowner needs to know about assessing their septic system and upgrading to a new one if necessary. And secondly, an extraordinary partnership with the region's two leading banks, Adirondack Trust and Glens Falls National Bank, where they will offer zero rate and low rate financing for property owners looking to upgrade their septic systems. Truly nothing like this has ever been available before for the Lake George Basin property owner community. Our program offers a complete package for homeowners from fixing to financing for their septic systems. In no small measure, the Safe Septic Program, I think is one of the most important initiatives that the Fund for Lake George has ever created in its 40 year history of protecting the lake. So with that as introduction, it's my pleasure to introduce Eric Sai, Executive Director of the Fund for Lake George. Eric. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank to all of you for being with us this, this morning. Jeff uh, summed it up very well, what we're here for and what we're so excited to announce. I, I just wanna say that today is a great day for Lake George and for the legacy we wish to leave. The Safe Septic Program is an all-in, all-out commitment to ensuring every septic system is safe. Why does that matter? The impacts from inadequate wastewater treatment, both public and private, represent one of the biggest threats to the signature water quality of Lake George. Nutrients from faulty and failing septic systems are feeding a growing abundance of algae in the lake. Science documents the trend. Over 37 years, there's been a 32% rise in chlorophyll A concentrations, an established measure of algae growth. Stories tell us, and we've all heard them over and over, more and more people talk about seeing more and more algae on their docks, on their boats, on the rocks. It's spreading. And the images show us, as you're about to see, pictures don't lie and the facts are clear. We literally face a growing threat from increased nutrients feeding increased algae growth. The nightmare scenario is a harmful algal bloom. With more and more algae, especially near shore, we may well be reaching a tipping point where such a toxic bloom would turn our crystal clear waters pea soup green. Picture that, picture the headlines. 
Toxic blooms are increasing throughout the state and beyond. Indeed, it's a global crisis. And by no means is Lake George immune to the threat. So knowing this, the fund and our waterkeeper program are moving aggressively to solve the problem and turn down the taps on nutrient loading to avoid ever reaching that tipping point. And it's important to point out, we're already succeeding in reducing the impacts of municipal treatment systems. Major highlight, we've, we've, we, hopefully all of you have seen that the new wastewater treatment plant now being built in the village of Lake George, which is the single largest source of nitrates, a nutrient, into the lake. And the wastewater treatment plant improvements at Bolton feature the fund granted wood chip bioreactor, a technology that is already demonstrating major nutrient reductions, as high as 80% removal of nitrates because of that system. So we now focus our attention on the other side of the wastewater issue, those 6,000 private on-site septic systems in the Lake George watershed. As you're about to hear, research by our Lake George Waterkeeper reveals that as many as 4,000 of these systems, two thirds, may be contaminating water quality and contributing to the harmful algal bloom threat. The power of the program, as Jeff points out, is in the partnerships being forged to guarantee its success. Indeed, from fixing to financing, equipping and empowering all property owners to do their part. Every system counts. Every property owner with a private septic system has a role to play in protecting our lake as well as property values. It's the ultimate win-win to no lose. As goes the health of the lake, Jeff, Jeff said, and I'm gonna repeat it, so goes the health of our lake-based economy and the legacy we wish to leave our children and grandchildren. The magnitude of the threat we face is only surpassed by the size of the opportunity now at hand, if we all do our part. In a few moments, we're gonna take you through the whole program, but first, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce Lake George Waterkeeper, Chris Nowitzki, who will take us deeper into the issue, the intensifying threat it poses, and the research that drives this unprecedented new program. Chris. Thank you, Eric, and good morning to everyone. As mentioned, there is increased algae growth observed around the lake, and this is detailed in the fund's seminal 30-year study. In that study, it was noted that chlorophyll concentrations have increased 32% since 1980. Correspondingly, development has increased 62% over the same period along with that wastewater production. This results in anthropogenic or human-induced nutrient loading. One of the leading sources of nutrient impact can be septic systems, especially when they're antiquated and unmaintained. Other impacts from underperforming septic systems are health, especially when our drinking water is affected. Lake George remains a drinking water supply to thousands and pathogens and bacteria from inadequate treatment can cause health problems. Reductions to water quality and clarity can have drastic impacts to property values. Lake George is the largest market of lakefront property in the state with some of the highest property values in the nation. The Waterkeeper started analyzing algae in the late 2000s and established protocols and metrics to assess the excessive nutrients and potential sources. This is an example of the fund's science to solutions approach. Two locations studied by the waterkeeper were Diamond Point in the town of Lake George and Dunham's Bay in the town of Queensbury. Both provided important data regarding the link between aging and antiquated systems and algae growth. In Dunham's Bay, excessive algae was documented and working with local residents, it was discovered that 21% of the systems were adequately designed and permitted 14% had marginal information, but two thirds of the systems were undocumented and unknown. Excessive algae growth was analyzed with samples indicating algae of concern. This catalyzed with local residents working through the Dunham's Bay Association and working along with the waterkeeper to petition the fund 
to petition the town of Queensbury to form a first wastewater management district in the Lake George Basin to improve on-site treatment and improve maintenance as well as system upgrades through grant opportunities. In the town of Lake George, the town board recognized the science provided through the waterkeeper documenting excessive algae growth and they passed a resolution establishing the town of Lake George septic initiative program. The town obtained a DEC grant that was administered by the fund resulting in the most detailed assessment of on-site wastewater treatment systems in the basin. And these findings were astonishing. Two thirds of the systems have reached or exceeded their expected life, or there's no information at all on the system. More than 50% of the systems have no known records or have never been maintained. And 50% of the septic tanks are undersized or have no information on their size. But our research has demonstrated that improvements can be achieved. In Dunham's Bay, where a third of the systems have been replaced or upgraded, many with enhanced treatment, which provides a better, higher quality effluent, the algae of concern has been reduced by 25%. And last year, the algae biomonitoring work of the waterkeeper was recognized by the New York Water Environment Association with the Lynn Enslow Memorial Award. To reduce nutrient pollution to the lake, the fund is looking to work with all homeowners in the basin to educate them on how their systems work, on how they can look for telltale signs of the system's operation, how they can be empowered to do the right thing for their systems, for their properties, for their communities, and for our lake. And this will be accomplished through our complete guide for safe septic systems. And I would like to turn it back to Eric now. Thank you, Chris. That was very informative. So understanding the threat and guided by research, we now equip every septic system owner to act. From ensuring your system is safe, meaning it works properly, to fixing the system if it does not. It's already been said by Jeff, but it bears repeating brief briefly. The program's one-two punch for knocking down nutrients features. Low and no interest financing. We're doing this to remove cost as a barrier to taking action. And we have an unprecedented partnership with Adirondack Trust and Glens Falls National Bank that you're going to be hearing more about shortly. And a new interactive website that we're also gonna share. The program's easy to use, and it really is easy to use, for educating and empowering every septic system owner to do their part, that's safeseptiksystems.org. So to tour us through the new site is lead designer, TJ Hellman of Tamarack Media Cooperative, a vital fund partner, TJ, take it away. Thanks, Eric. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're really excited to, to be able to share with you the, the new website. We think it's going to be a great feature. Um, and let me see, I can share my screen here with folks. Um, sorry, it looks like we need to turn on screen sharing for me. There we go. And just pull this up. So the, as Eric mentioned, the new website is available today at safeseptiksystems.org. Um, again, this is going to be a great resource for everybody in the Lake George Basin. Uh, it was really important for us to start off, as you see here on the homepage, and present what this is all about, protecting Lake George clean and clear water and keeping it that way. Uh, one of the themes of the, the campaign and the program, too precious to waste. And we really wanted to start with that as a is a major point. Um, as Eric mentioned, the images don't lie. It was important to show people this is an actual image of, of algae growth in Lake George. Um, and just the stark contrast of, of kind of why this is so important, why it's important for folks to take action. Also provide here, you know, Eric mentioned, uh, you know, around 6,000 uh, private septic systems in the basin um, and we provide, you know, really visually the impact of that is, is striking. And so to provide an image of that, 
can give people an idea of two thirds of these might be failing in this whole area and the threat that that really poses to our lake. So what we, what we provide here also is one of the easy ways encourage folks to check out, you know, one of the, the first pages on the site, you know, is my system safe? Try to make this, like Eric was saying, as easy as possible. Um, what we've done is provide a little guide here, questions such as, do you know where your septic system is? Do you know where your drinking water supply is? Do you know the age of your septic system? So really just a really easy guide for people to be able to go through um, and answer the questions um, and get all the resources that they need um, to be able to take part in this, in, in this program um, and take advantage of it. Really try to make it as easy as possible for people to, to jump right in. Some of the other things that you'll find, you know, we offer the financing options, which we'll, co we'll cover here in a second, some service providers, and the full guide, which is a really thorough resource for everybody to take advantage. So I encourage people to, you know, to really check out the site, and we look forward to being able to offer this to the, to the, to the folks that live in the basin to take advantage of this program. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Eric. Apologies for that. Thank you, TJ. I was speaking to myself. That was excellent. And I think it gives you at least a flavor, a taste of what you'll find on the website and encourage everybody to go there and check it out. It's, it's now my pleasure and honor to introduce Bill Creighton. Vice Chairman of the Fund for Lake George and lead representative working with Adirondack Trust and Glens Falls National to establish the program's breakthrough financing program. Bill? Thank you, Eric. Uh, again, I'm Bill Creighton, Vice Chairman of the Fund, and I'm a Lake George property owner with a home in Pilot Knob. And as you've heard, we've developed a comprehensive program to inform and guide property owners on everything they need to know about understanding their septic system and how to make sure it's performing as it should, including upgrading or replacing it as appropriate. Now a breakthrough element of our program is to make upgrades or replacements more affordable to homeowners and small businesses. And here we've created an extraordinary partnership with the two leading banks serving the Lake George market. And they are offering no interest or low interest financing to those seeking septic system financing. Now specifically, Adirondack Trust is offering zero interest loans in certain areas of the Southern Basin and Glens Falls National is offering several different types of low interest loans throughout the entire Lake George Basin. In both cases, loan applications will be processed quickly and there will be zero closing costs. I really want to applaud our two bank partners, Glens Falls National and Adirondack Trust for their vision, innovation and collaboration. They are joining us in putting the water quality of Lake George first. So now it is my pleasure to introduce Matt Harrison, Vice President, Residential Lending from Adirondack Trust, to share with you his comments. Good morning. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Adirondack Trust's real mission is to take the communities that we serve to higher places. We're help, here to help many businesses and local people <clears throat> as much as possible. And we've been doing that since 1901. It is this passion that drives our actions and our participation in this program is a perfect example of that. Protecting the queen of the American lakes, as we call it, presents many challenges. And we're happy to do to provide our part, our small part of that solution. Through our low, no interest rate program, we hope to help take the lake to a better level. And we all know that Lake George is so vital to our regional economy. Now on a personal note, although I don't own property on Lake George, I've spent my entire life 
in it. Uh, I believe that I was probably in that water before I was baptized. And I can assure you that both of my children, that was the case. Thank you. All right, thank you, Matt. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Mark Yersha, Senior Vice President, Corporate Development from Glens Falls National for his comments. Thanks, Bill, good morning. Uh, caring for our communities is the core part of our company's mission. Glens Falls National is very pleased to have partnered with the fund and Adirondack Trust in a collaborative, collaborative and innovative way to keep Lake George clean and vibrant for many years to come. This program is a, gate, is a great way to allow for easy access to septic system upgrades and improvements to qualified borrowers around the lake. Our Lake George office is ready and, and open to help customers whenever, this, uh, whenever they have a need um, from this moment forward to help support this program. Um, we're very happy to be associated with, uh, with the fund and working with Adirondack Trust to keep the lake clean. Thanks. So I'll take it back. Thank, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Mark. Uh, in closing, I just want to say that first, I want to thank everybody for participating in this momentous event. And it's absolutely true that property owner by property owner, system by system, we can, no, 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 we must get this done. As our speakers have shown from fixing to financing, the steps to success are not hard to follow. And the rewards for doing so are as clear as our Great Lake continues to be. We call on everyone with a septic system at Lake George to take that all important first step today. Go to safeseptiksystems.org, start the process, solve the problem, stop the threat. Future generations will thank you for the actions you take. Our one and only Lake George deserves nothing less. Thank you very much. John? Thanks a lot, Eric, and thanks everybody for, uh, for being here again. As I said earlier, we're now going to open the floor to questions about the Safe Septic program, whether it be the website or the financing program. Um, because they have deadlines to meet, I would ask that we allow the news media representatives to go first with their questions. Um, to ask a question, what we're going to have you do is click the raise hand button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, my colleague Bill Richmond will see that you've raised your hands and you'll hear his voice calling on you to uh, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, we're going to leave everyone in the audience on mute unless we're calling on you for a question just to avoid any confusion or people inadvertently talking over one another. Um, if you have a specific person on the panel that you're directing a question to, we ask you to, to feel free to do that. Otherwise, I think we'll probably have Eric um, answer or, or moderate the question from that standpoint. Um, and one final thing, again, because we are not going to be able to see the audience during this session, we would ask that you please identify yourself uh, before you ask your question. Uh, so with that, um, go ahead. I don't know if anyone has raised their hand yet, but uh, Bill Richmond will be able to assist you as we move forward. Yep, thanks, John. We have uh, Steve Williams here. I'm going to unmute you. Steve, go ahead. Uh, okay, can you hear me? I yes. think I muted myself, but I'm not sure. No, we, we can hear you. Okay, I, I have two questions. One would be for uh, Eric or uh, Chris. If we can compare how the uh, Northern Basin and Southern Basin are in terms of the nutrient load in them and the number of septic systems. And then for the bankers, I, I just would wonder how long would be the term of a loan for repair of a septic system? So thanks very much, Steve. It's great having you on. Uh, I'm going to actually defer to Chris 
uh, to answer that excellent question on nutrient loading south versus north to get the specifics. Chris? Uh, hello, uh, Steve, thanks for the question. Um, the dent obviously the number of uh, people in the southern basin is greater than the northern basin. Uh, I would put it probably two to one, um, just rough numbers. Um, and you can see that on the website at the uh, map that we've produced. Um, but we are seeing the problems in the North Basin as well. And through our research with Dunham's Bay, a much smaller data set as compared to the town of Lake George with their septic initiative, the numbers were about the same. You know, that two thirds of the people, you know, had undocumented or knew nothing about their system. Two thirds of the systems in the town of Lake George were antiquated or people had no information. So the number, the ratio is relatively consistent over data sets of small and larger. So, and our algae analysis has been documented in the North Basin as well. So um, the problem is visible up there. It, it's probably just a smaller number. And for the, for the banks, uh, Bill, do you wanna field that and, or Mark, Matt, yeah. however you choose. I don't mind answering. Thanks, Mark. So the, the thoughts from the banks uh, working together is you know, we wanted to provide um, finance, financing options and flexibility for folks depending on size needs. So, you know, exact term, I think we can we can come up with a structure that can support um, the borrower's needs. So, um, I don't think there's a, a one a one stop shop or a, a cookie cutter approach here. We tried to be very general in how we could structure something to support the need of the upgrade or replacement, whatever it is and whatever that expense might be. Matt, do you wanna to add to that? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, we have a question from Chad Arnold. Chad, go ahead. Thank you. This is, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes, perfect. This is uh, Chad Arnold with the Post Star. I'm just wondering, I have a question for uh, Matt and Mark. Just, just how long will these uh, loans be available for? Is this something you'd be offering for the next five or 10 years? Or is this something that's going to be uh, on a permanent basis going forward? Uh, so our, this is Mark from West Wales National. Our thought is, um, you know, we're going to revisit, we're going to, we're going to, do this based on demand. So we're hoping that, you know, everyone comes in and there's huge demand for this. Um, you know, it's an innovative new program. We're kind of going to play this, play this out and see what the demand is and support it as long as we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We know Yeah, I can, I can also comment on that. Thanks, Mark. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we're, we're, we too are, are not really putting an end date to this and we've allocated a million dollars towards this initiative yeah, initially. Um, but that number can certainly change. And, and just uh, a follow up if I may, uh, Matt, you said you uh, been allocated a million dollars initially. Uh, Mark, can you tell me how much uh, Glens Falls has allocated? Uh, one five. 1.5? Thank you. And just one more. Uh, when can people start applying for these loans? Is this something they can walk into a bank today? Or is there uh, you have a start date on when, when you will start accepting uh, applications for these loans? We're open to accepting applications as Mark again in our Lake George office as, as soon as today. Mm -hmm. Same here. We're ready. Right. Thank you. Okay, we also have a question from Rai Rivard. Rai, go ahead. Hi, thanks. This is Rai Rivard from the Adirondack Explorer. This is for uh, Matthew and Mark. Um, two things. One, have you seen an effect at all on property values um, from some of the algal blooms that we've seen photos of already? And then can you talk about your experience with customers who might be looking for either a typical home upgrade or a septic specific home upgrade and sort of what they have to go through, you know, before today, before this program. Thank you. Uh, 
yeah, maybe I can, I don't know if you hear me, uh, you know, we haven't seen any change in value um, with respect specific to water quality. Um, and uh, as far as home improvements, I mean, we, you know, this, this particular initiative is, is specific to septic improvement. Um, obviously, we've, you know, we're in the business to help homeowners improve their property. So, um, but this specific no interest program for us is specific to a collaboration with uh, the fund itself. That's similar to us as well at Glens, at Glens Falls National. I think we're, uh, we have options to help, to help folks with home improvements. This is just a specific program to support, to support the fund in Lake George. And, and if I could add, Rai, you know, this for us is a, it's a vital puzzle piece to protecting Lake George from the threat of faulty or failing septic systems. So the fact that we have focused on the all important issue of financing and that we have this extraordinary partnership with the two leading regional banks, what it does really is it provides a, an open door to those folks who wouldn't otherwise feel they need to avail themselves of a program because they don't really know better. You know, for so many people, this is the classic case of out of sight, out of mind. Well, we're working through this uh, full court press program to make it top of mind with our partners to get this done. Okay, we have a question from Jay Petroquin. Jay, go ahead. Hey, can you guys hear me? There we go. I think we're good. Yep. All right. Awesome. Uh, I had a question about the assessment itself, I guess for Eric or from whoever uh, from the fund would be best equipped to answer this. Um, looking at the number of these septic systems in this assessment that were near past their uh, estimated life expectancy, were the owners of these homes generally people who were aware of that fact, if this is something you knew, aware of that fact, but not knowing where to go to deal with that problem? Or was it a lot of people who maybe were not aware that there were steps that need to be taken to improve their systems? That's a great question. Chris? Uh, uh, hi, Jay. Thank you. The data that we collected and this was primarily through our septic initiative uh, program that went along with uh, um, a survey that was sent out to all the homeowners. So we had, there was questions that the town had put together on what their system was, how they maintained it. Uh, we had an extraordinary rate of 34% responding. Um, and a lot of those were the ones that knew about it, but part of the town's program was to provide outreach and educate them. So that improved the uh, maintenance that was going on. And um, so I think, you know, there was a number of people that learned that they may have a problem. They're not sure, as Eric said, this is, all these systems are underground, so people are not really aware of them. So by educating them, and that's what this guide wants to do, letting them know the signs that they need to look for. They can learn more about it and how they can maintain it. The tells tail signs of potential failure. So, um, so to get back, it was a survey. It was through the re review of town records and outreach. And we did bring and raise a level of education and awareness of homeowners. But we knew that this had to go to a much larger scale and a much higher level. So that's what we did. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jay. Uh, it looks like that may be all the media questions that we have. I uh, just want to be sure before we move on to audience questions, if any of the reporters had a follow-up question that uh, we need to address. And if not, we'll move on to the audience questions. And of course, we can always come back to a reporter. If you, another question comes up, just raise your hand again, please. Uh, so we have a question from Carol Collins. So Carol, go ahead. Okay. 
Carol, it looks like your computer may still be on mute. How's that? Better. Better? <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Uh, it's nice to see this program started. Um, and I've been looking at your sep safe septic systems.org website. Uh, I'm very interested in the fact that we all seem to be moving towards these um, ETUs or these enhanced wastewater tr treatment systems. Um, there is a mention in here, and it just happens to be a topical one because I was talking with Chris about this. I, it, ETUs are, have value in how they clean the water, the septic system, but they don't reduce the nutrient loading as much as we may think. Um, they don't re they reduce the nitrogen loading by 30%, but they do not reduce the phosphorus loading, which is a, a cr critical concern to what we're dealing with in Lake George. Um, and because of that, I did want to mention that on your site, it says that it may reduce the site of the soil absorption area by a third. Uh, I want everyone to be a little careful of that because that would also reduce how much phosphor absorption occurs as well. Uh, and so reducing the size may not be a good idea. Uh, and, and we need to let towns, et cetera, be aware of that. Thanks, Carol. Um, well, well, thanks, Carol. We, uh, the reference to that is simply to the uh, New York State Department of Health Design Standards. They allow a, um, a reduction by a third. You know, that is noted. Um, we do have the information on the ETUs for um, people to contact. Um, and we also include information in there about the importance of the soils and how, you know, the maintenance is necessary as well as the, you know, higher effluent to maintain those soils. But that's, you know, we only went with the design standards that the state offered. And let's face it, New York State Department of Health tends to be one of the most conservative uh, Department of Health that, that there were around. So. Um, thanks. Thanks, Chris. So I, I would say, we're, are there any other questions? If not, why don't we wrap it up? We're, we're running a little late. And I, I, I would only say just in closing again, for every septic system owner to take that all important first step visit safeseptic and start the process we're with you we're for you this is for the lake it's for all of us and it's for the future thank you very much again for participating in this important event and this great day for lake george